Um, you, yeah, we're ready to uh, go. It's uh, It's been kind of, kind of a weird week with the weather and not having a chance to be outside yet. Um, but uh, this team is um, used to handling weird things and weather or days off or taking a trip. Um, I don't think it's really going to phase them. I thought our, our work the last couple of days in the batting cage has been really good. Um, I thought our defensive work, uh, who I work with, with the infield was really good as well here today. So we'll hopefully the rain will stop. We'll get an hour on the field tomorrow get just, just to try to get some work in. It's a normal practice for us on a late game to, to get the kids, whether, whether we're at home um, or whether we're um, on the road to go to the opposing place and hit and do some stuff. So um, we'll, we'll take advantage of that tomorrow as well. And just to make sure they're getting out of bed and doing the things that they're going to do, get them a good pregame meal. And, and then um, looking forward to an amazing crowd and an amazing environment for uh, the next couple of days. What is, what is the preparation in terms of how much effort do you put into trying to get to know Clemson? Because I'm guessing you have a lot of time compared to a yeah. typical situation. Yeah. So what, what does that kind of look like? I mean, I, I personally watched um, the first night I watched just a little bit, like after we had won, I went home and kind of put my computer in my lap and was watching the Texas game. I was wa kind of watching that and just getting, like the first thing I do is I watch their their hitters. I watch um, who bunts, who slaps, kind of, is it one of their first at bats? Is it any at bat? You know, a lot of kids do the same, they fall into a routine. So maybe you can pick something up there, but it's always good I, when I'm helping place the defense, I always want to know who those hitters are that are kind of those threats to run or do some things. So I, I, I watched that the first night. I watched Cagle and the other lefty um, the second day, um, just kind of familiarizing myself with them and then kind of watch their hitters. We have a system called Synergy and I like to go in there and just watch all their hard hits. I want to know when they, when they look good, what does it look like? Um, where were their, where were the pitches, that kind of stuff. I know John's doing the same thing. Jeff's doing the same thing. Vanessa's doing the same thing. Whitney's helping us get stuff broke down if we need all that or getting filmed stuff. So we just, we kind of have our own little routines and then we get together and talk about a little bit of a game plan. Uh, we had a little discussion if Kegel's, if she's throwing curves and screws or are they just drops that she's making have curved spin and gets inside on the inside the uh, ball and the balls that look like they drop in and and screw so we just kind of had a good healthy discussion there on what we think that that, that was but that's kind of the way we go and then we've our girls have watched a little bit of video on their pitchers twice i just still have not still not convinced that smoking them with video is the best thing i think a lot of times we start getting defensive when we're worried about what the other team does instead of making sure that we've got the emergency break off and, and we're just doing what we do best. And, um, and uh, I think if, if we can do what we do best, we'll, we'll play well. I think Kelly had mentioned a few weeks back the, the difference she felt with a Super Regional here versus when you guys went to Florida State. How much does that value extend into this week of getting to prep here and then getting to play here tomorrow night and Friday? Yeah, I think, you know, that first one at Florida State, we didn't really care. We were just pumped, right? We got to go, and, and we were could, could, we couldn't wait to, to get on that charter flight and go and make all that stuff happen. Now it's like um, it's really cool the last couple of years having it here and being able to just um, enjoy home, enjoy your own bed, not having to travel. These kids have traveled a lot. Um, and I, I think there, there, there's also value in, in traveling, but it's also nice to be at home knowing – um, that our home field advantage, just like Clemson's. Clemson has a really good home field advantage. I knew Clemson would be able to, when, when, when they hired John, I knew they would be good. Um, but I knew because of their baseball that they would be able to draw to softball as well, like we are here. That's one, that's one of the most attractive things. So having the, these fans that understand our sport um, playing here, um, knowing it's going to be crazy, knowing that it's late so they can um, tailgate all day long is, um, makes me happy. You seem to wear in Oklahoma City of all the eyes that were on that that title game, to have a home crowd here, two games on ESPN in, in front of this group and at this stadium. What what does that do for you guys, or what could it do? Well, I think it just continues to build our brand. It continues to be the reason why 
we are very attractive to transfers, um, to recruits, to um, anyone. Um, you just see what's going on here, and I, 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 I I'm think I'm going to stop trying to explain what it's like here. You just have to trust us and come here and check it out. There's a reason people keep coming here and going, man, this is cool. And um, this is different and it's hard to explain, um, but um, it's really neat. And, and um, uh, I don't know, that's kind of where, where I'm at on that. Hope I answered that right. Even, even knowing what John brought to that to that program at, at Clemson, you're not surprised that a program can go from nothing to this as quickly as they have. Um, when you have Valerie Cagle, you can you can be good, you know what I mean. Um, and then they've added depth, you know they've added others. Um, and and honestly, John did a really nice job of finding her. Um, I don't remember the story exactly, but I don't think she was committed to Clemson at first. I think she may have been committed somewhere else and decommitted and changed. I think um, that's the story. You have to ask him. Uh, but something like she wasn't a she wasn't like a crazily highly recruited kid that I remember. And um, John's done a really nice job. His staff, you know, with her. I mean, this how this is the evolution of kids. I mean, they just kids blossom when it's their time. And we try to force all that stuff, but really it just happens when it's their time. And so when you get an elite arm, um, like you guys have seen here, when we got Shao, it kind of changed the face of this program just a little bit. Um, and then you see the Eberleys and you see the Maxwells. And when you have elite arms, you can win any game. And you still have to hit and play catch and make plays and all that kind of stuff. But um, I'm not surprised. Um, He's, he's recruited, you know, he may have recruited one of the best players of all time and Jess Mendoza. So he knows what good looks like. Um, and um, his experience is, is why I think that Clemson made a really good hire. Who do you think's a bigger fan of OSU softball, Mike Boynton or Bernard Kuma? <laughs> I think Mike Boynton. <laughs> now I'm pretty sure, uh, but I think that was probably a real, a real big fan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how uh, do you know how Bernie got so in? I don't know, but when he walks in our office, he scares me because he's. I think he's gonna hit his head on the ceiling <laughs> every time. I'm like, are you all right? He's like, yeah, man. I just have to duck when I go, and I'm like, that's awesome. So, you know, I try. I just told you I'm gonna quit explaining what makes this place awesome, right? Well, that's why. I mean, we have a we have a pretty open door. Like, I don't really, I don't really mind who walks in. Um, just as long as they're respectful and they understand, hey, we're trying to do our job here and all that. But it's cool that he just kind of comes in and just hangs out. And um, I think that tells you a lot about Coach Boynton too. I mean, I think he's probably encouraging those, those guys to to be around and be seen and be a part of what this place is. And and that's why I think um, why. Well, believe that Mike is going to be uber su successful here. I think, it, like I said, it takes time. He's been dealt some horrible cards. Um, he just keeps grinding and, and, and things just keep incrementally getting better. Um, and um, guys like that, you know what I mean? Um, Kuma's just a cool dude. He's just, he's just, I like talking to him. It's an interesting cat. Mm -hmm. He should probably be the Dos Equis guy. <laughs> Most interesting guy, uh, guy, uh, guy on earth. So, I know you talked throughout the year that you guys, you know, you're not the chase. But when you get to the postseason, I mean, is it is it starting to become more and more expected to host regionals and to host supers and to you know make your way back to Oklahoma City? Um, I I think that's our expect expectation inside. Um, I I wouldn't want it any other way. It was my expectation the first year to go to a regional. I didn't know how. I, I was I, I would be I would be lying if I said I wasn't worried at, at times. And I wasn't worried about me. I was worried about I want I committed to those kids that we were going to be successful. So in their minds, su success was getting to to a regional. I I have a bigger at forty three at that time. I had a bigger picture of what success is, right? And I know that through my experiences up to that time, that su success comes in a lot of ways and it looks different to many people. Um, but getting 
that team getting us to postseason in the first year, man, that, that was crazy. And then to be the number two seed at Georgia validated our schedule. When people said your schedule is way too hard, and I'm like, I don't care. If we're, if we're going to have any chance to get to a regional, we're going to might as well have to play the schedule now. And we're going to set the standard now. This is the way we're going to schedule. Um, so um, those guys handled that. I mean, we barely were over 500. Um, and we forced Georgia to an if game. And if we catch a foul ball in fair territory at first base, we may still be playing because we probably wouldn't have scored. Um, but we, I don't know that they were going to score. Right? It was wild. We just couldn't, we just couldn't score. Um, and so um, expectation, yeah, I guess. I mean, I think that's the expectation of our fans. I mean, you know, I kind of hear things out and about. I'm kind of trying to remind everybody, hey, these are important, like all of them, right? Um, they're like, we're, we're all the uh, same. And I don't want anybody to get bored with success because it's not easy. And winning, um, we should not get bored with. That's why I have our girls run out to the wall, and that's the that's the expectation now because winning is hard. And I learned that from a guy named uh, Bob Stoops. And when he started, they started taking pictures after big games, and he used to make some other schools in the conference mad. He's like, I don't think I don't really care what those guys think. What I care about is that um, we celebrate wins. It's a big deal. Winning, winning is really hard. And that always stuck in my, my head. I'm um, like, woo, that was, I, you know, I got to hear a lot of his post-game, pre-game things. I heard them all. I used to just make sure I was in there. And, and to hear all that stuff was valuable info to me now. Um, things that kind of come back to me um, in weird times. And I'm like, ooh, I remember that now. I'm going to use that. And it's just kind of cool. So I guess I was banking stuff, not knowing I was going to be a head softball coach. I can promise you that. That's, that'd be a lie. Um, but um, uh, been around some great people and, and, and what expectations are and what they look like and um, how hard they are to, to, to achieve. That's why we got to continue to celebrate the little things and make sure that those are important to our kids. When Kelly was in here the other night after, after the game, she talked about how she uh, added the change up in the fall and, and how they had changed it. Is it unique to have a, a player, a pitcher add to the repertoire and then seem to have pretty good mastery of it so quickly or is that is that common i think i think what you find is kelly's a kid that can um like if like if you said okay um throw this fastball she throws a fat the fastball you said okay that fastball was 66 throw it at 63. she could throw it probably right around there and it's a crazy feel that some kids have there are other really talented kids that would throw it at 66 and you said, okay, throw it at 63 and it was 68. And you're like, what just happened? Like how did, they don't have feel. Kelly has feel. So John's got a plan and the plan is, okay, we're gonna get, get you through this year with two. We're gonna master two. Next year, Kelly, as you become the ace, you're going to have to have a third pitch. So they tinkered around for, for a couple months trying to find the, the right change up. And there are many ways to throw that pitch. Um, they're going to have to have another wrinkle for next year because you can't continue to do the same thing over and over again. Um, you've got to evolve. And so um, whether it's tunneling the pitches differently, whether it's um, coming up with a, a maybe a changeup she throws, instead of throwing it at 55, she, she throws it at 59. It's a big it's a big change that gives you another speed same pitch looks the, the same just a hair harder and so um i don't know i haven't really talked to to uh, john yet about what he's thinking about next year he's been so crazy with this year but um he'll have something new for her to be working on to be thinking about still want to be able to throw those top three um at any time um and then hopefully starting to develop something off of one of those three whether it's i don't know but something so um it's cool it's really helped her um it's really really helped her it's been really cool to see and um when we're recruiting and we get to work with with kids in camps that's one of the first things that i know john does is ask them to do some di different things to see first off what their reaction is and second off what their feel is and 
when he finds a kid that's like, oh, okay. And then you go, oh, whoa, oh. you go, oh, that's a kid we could want, right? That she would fit us here. So um, that's part of the recruiting pro process for us. But um, getting back to your question, I guess, um, I, I, I don't know that it's uncommon, um, but I don't know that it's, um, that, a, that anybody can make it happen. So a lot of kids are, a lot of kids are just like, hey, I don't want to do that. I mean, you know, Carrie had a hard time wanting to throw her off speed here, okay? And um, she didn't throw it until we played OU here in a game, like a lot. Um, and then she got into pro ball and I was like watching her pitch and I was like, oh my gosh, she's throwing this off speed like all the time. And she was just, just, just like, I had to the hitters and I was like and then she said I didn't want to throw it here because I didn't need it until the very end so I didn't want to get ever get beat on my secondary stuff I wanted them to have to beat my best and so it's kind of a unique uh, way to look at things but um, all of them have to evolve if Kelly's gonna play pro ball she's gonna have to get better I like guess just these hitters are they're really good from year one to now, I mean, you said the standard was there from the start, but has, has have any of the expectations changed as as you look at potentially three straight College World Series appearances? Uh, do they evolve oh, naturally? I think they just they do evolve. I think you 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 reassess standards, and you know I think st standards are pretty set in stone. But I I also think that some things kind of you have to evolve as as a coach, like. You know, I had a no tattoo policy my first year here, no visible. Then Logan Sissimanek shows up with a sleeve, like in the middle of a year. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, and she's like, well, I, I know I have to wear a sleeve. And I'm like, so you got that to wear a sleeve over your sleeve. And she's like, yeah, I don't care. And so I said, do you think you're tough enough to pitch with that? Like, you, you th is that, are you trying to make people think you're tougher or what? She goes, no, I'm I'm tough enough. I said, well, pitch like it, and I'll let you take I'll let you take hit off, and she did. So that standard kind of you know evolved, um, and 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 so um, I think good programs evolve. They change with the times. I think you still have your pillars that you that you rest on. You know, that's the foundational piece. Um, but I think you can evolve things. So. And, and I think if you want to stay relevant with these kids, I think that's important too. You have to understand to me, to me, this is a two way deal. Um, you know, like I look at, I look at like OU, they probably do the best job of, they don't really give in on anything. Okay. Um, but you better win at their level or I think it can get really hard. You know what I mean? And so um, I envious of, of what they do, you know, in that way. Um, but I also like, I also think there's a way to do things our own way and go, it's pretty cool. And kids want to be a part of that and, and you can be the best version of you and be who you want to be as long as you're respectful to everybody else. Where else have you evolved? I know even like the loud dugout antics isn't exactly your style, but where else have you had to, to maybe change? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I've probably gotten a little a little um, softer, you know what I mean? And I think in some regards it's hurt us. Um, in some regards it's helped us. I think I've um, um, I've evolved. Probably the biggest thing I've done is I'm letting my assistants do their job fully, um, taking more. Like I I think I got in when I got here. I was like. Like I'm, I'm the people guy, you know, I'm the relationship guy. And I got here, I was trying to do that and then do the hitting and do the defense and, um, and you know, do all this stuff. And you just in recruiting and control everything and not, and I'm not a control freak, but just really like having my hands on everything. And I just got myself worn down. Um, and I just remember going, man, if I keep going like this, there's no way I can do this for a long time. It's just too much. Um, and then I just threw, through kind of my life coach, Brent Led better. Um, I was able to kind of 
let go of things, say, hey, you hired these people to do a job, let them do a job and be good at what you do. And I was kind of griping to, to him that I kind of lost the, the relationship part. I wasn't the main guy anymore. It was the assistant, the assistants. And I was like, I hate it. Like, I don't like this. This is not what I wanted to do in coaching. I want to be that guy that they come to and talk to and trust. And I started feeling a different vibe. And he said, you can't do ev ev everything. Do what you're good, you're good at. Let your people do their job. So um, I've evolved in letting people, trusting people, letting people make, letting them make decisions. You, hey, you can't call me on every single thing. Like just make the decision. Jesse Martin here, he'll call me and say, hey, if, 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 if you're mad, be mad at me. I just, you weren't here. I needed to make this decision. I'm like, I wasn't here, go ahead. I, he said, do you like it? No, but you made the decision, so go. So I'm good, you know what I mean? So I can't be, be mad. Um, and that's been a hard thing when you're trying to control everything. So I think I've just gotten better personally. Um, you know, my, my wife has really helped me too, um, just with a different perspective on things. It helps me get away and do some things. I've never have gone on va vacations, like real ones, until I met her and now it's like, can't wait. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't wait to get there. You know, obviously I, I can wait, but I, I know that that's coming and I can't wait. Um, and I'll get away. And I know that, that, that kind of stuff. So just personally getting better here, but I think foundationally the, the team and stuff is pretty, pretty, pretty solid and pretty set.